well praise the name of the Lord God of hosts. By now you would have celebrated Christmas and uh, looking forward for 2021. What a year 2020 has been. And we want to thank God for bringing us this far by faith. Welcome to this program hosted by the Faith, Hope and Love Center. And I think it's our last broadcast for 2020. And I suppose uh, many persons are uh, going the, the way of New Year's resolution and promises made and so on. But we want to continue to follow the dictates of God. And so we want to invite you to our time of worship and praise. And then we will continue with our intercession before God. And certainly, when you come back, we'll be talking about a topic, letting go of the offense before it destroys you and the next generation. We cannot afford to go into 2021 with offense and weight and unforgiveness in our spirits. Letting go of the offense before it destroys you and the next generation. We'll be right back.
Truly there is no other God besides thee. Thou God is high and is lifted up. Thou God, Heavenly Father, from generation to generation. And I thank you and I glorify thee and I honor thee, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your great love. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your great grace amongst us. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercies. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and kindness. Heavenly Father, I worship you. Heavenly Father, I praise your magnificent name. There is no other God but you. You are high, Heavenly Father. You are lifted up. You are Jehovah God. You are the self-existent God. You need Heavenly Father, no one else to prompt you up because you are just God. And Heavenly Father, we worship you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for your goodness towards us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us this year and all that you continue to do for us this year. 
We thank you, God, for all the adventures that we have been through this year with the Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for your deliverance, Heavenly Father, that occur every time we trust in the Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for all the circumstances, the good, the bad, Heavenly Father. We just thank you because you continue to prove yourself that you are our God. Our Heavenly Father, we worship you. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you, O oh God, continue to be our provider. You continue, God, to keep us, Heavenly Father, to cover us, O oh God. We come against, Heavenly Father, all that exalted itself above your will, Heavenly Father. And we ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that your will alone will prevail in our lives. We magnify you, O oh God. We praise you. We glorify you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we come to you. And we come to you, O oh God, with great expectancy because you have been so good to us this year. We know, Heavenly Father, that you will be good to us also in 2021. God, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you will continue, God, to anoint us, that you will continue, God, to fill us with your very self. We ask, O oh God, for your direction, that you will continue, God, to be our light, that you continue, O oh God, to give us insight into your design, and we will walk after that design, Heavenly Father. We pray, O oh God, Heavenly Father, that you give us the ability, O oh God, to be obedient, that we will take courage, O oh God, to be obedient consistently. I pray, O oh God, that we wouldn't walk before you as careless, but God, we will walk with the Heavenly Father, with purpose, Heavenly Father, with much courage, Heavenly Father. We'll walk before the Heavenly Father, trusting in you, O oh God. We'll walk before the Heavenly Father, believing in you, O oh God. God, you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Heavenly Father. You are the one that initiated your design upon our lives. And God, you are the one that also initiated that walk according to the, that design. And God, we know that you are able to finish that walk based on your design, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. So God, I thank you for 2021, Heavenly Father, that you continue to go with us, that you continue to bless faith, hope, and love, that you continue, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to enrich us with yourself, Heavenly Father, to enrich us, Heavenly Father, with your purpose, to enrich us, Heavenly Father, with your design, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I praise you. Heavenly Father, I glorify thee, for there is no other God besides thee. I thank you, O oh God. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I worship you, O oh God. Faith, hope, and love worship you. Faith, hope, and love, Heavenly Father, praise you. Faith, hope, and love, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, appreciate you because you have been their God and you continue to be in our God, Heavenly Father. God, we worship, we thank you, and we glorify thee in no other name but in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Welcome back. We now get into the Word of God. And uh, um, we, we would be making deposits on this topic. I'm not sure we'll be able to cover all today. And so this would be our first deposit on letting go of the offense before it destroys you and the next generation. Say, if you have your Bible, you want to grab it because we would be going through uh, the book of Obadiah. Did you say Obadiah? Yes, the book of Obadiah. Because it seemed to me that that is one of the most uh, beautiful nuggets of Scripture buried in the Old Testament. And few people even go across to Obadiah to find out what this prophet is saying. Just one chapter. And so we'd be going through the book of Obadiah. And now, all of us have been hurt at some point in time in our lives, and we ourselves have hurt others. Some wounds are deeper than others, or I suppose dependent on the relationship you have with an individual. Sometimes it's a friend, sometimes it's a family, sometimes it's a pastor, a brother, or sister in the church. And uh, based on the, the level of expectations we have of people the wounds will go deeper. But I'll tell you this. 
wounds can hold on to the human spirit. And while the human spirit was never designed to carry toxic information, it can hold on to your spirit longer than it should, especially when justice issues are involved. But yet the real danger lurking in the dark is the longer the issues remain unresolved, the more the potential of it doing devastation to you, your family, the nation it can push thus far. Because unmanaged wounds can be transformed from personal, family, community to national grudges. Such was the case of two brothers, Jacob and Esau, who in fact had some serious problems within their family. But to appreciate the narrative, we must speak to the background to this book of Obadiah. Obadiah is considered to be a minor prophet, not because that his message was minor, his message was major, but because of the size of the book. And to understand Obadiah, we need to go back to Genesis chapter 25, verse 22 to 26, where Rebecca, she was pregnant, but there was difficulty in her pregnancies. In, in a pregnancy, the Bible declares in Genesis 25 from verse 21, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered was fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they call his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare him. And so immediately you are seen from this narrative that Rebecca, pregnant with twins, out of the same womb, shall come to manner of people. Out of the same womb, there is conflict. Out of the same womb, two brothers, oh, they are so different in their appearance. The second thing we would appreciate in the background is this. Jacob, who held on to the heel of his brother, became a swindler, a trickster. And so Jacob, at a certain time, while God declares that the younger will lead, Jacob's approach to getting leadership was through means that were less than desirable. Jacob swindled the birthright from Esau, his brother. In Genesis 25, verses 29 to 34, we read, And Jacob sought pottage, and Esau came from the field, and, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, red. And Jacob said, Oh, you want of my food, then sell me this day your birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright 
unto Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. At the point of vulnerability, Jacob, as it were, he was an opportunist. He took the time when his brother was hungry and he swindled his brother of his birthright. This Jacob, he then became and was called swindler. You would note that out of the, 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 the name of the, the pottage red and, 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 and Esau's look, he was called Edom. And so Esau's name was called Edom and so his descendants were called the Edomites. In Genesis 25 and verse 30 it says, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. The Edomites, they live in Mount Seir. And so that whole place was called the country of Edom, based on Genesis 32 and verse 3. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. In Genesis 36, 8, thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And in Genesis 36, 9, it is very clear that the Edomites who dwelt in Mount Seir were the descendants of Esau. And so the Bible says, and these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. The fourth thing you would observe to the background to Obadiah is this. When you go back to the history of these two brothers, not only did Jacob swindle his brother of his birthright, he also connived with his mother to steal the patriarchal blessings from Esau. In Genesis 27, verses 19 to 23, the Bible says, And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau thy firstborn, which was clearly a lie. I have done according as thou biddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that my soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. So Jacob invoked God with his lie. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. But of course, they anticipated that the father would want to touch him. And so Jacob connived with his mother to get that coat on. So when he was touched by Isaac, Isaac said in verse 22, And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother's Esau's hands. And so he was blessed with a patriarchal blessing. The account then on the background to the book of Obadiah lays a story of a brother who tricked, swindled, connived, and cheated his brother of his birthright and his patriarchal blessings. I tell you, we are wounded, and sometimes the greatest wounds are the wounds inflicted by members of your own family. It could be the words of a mother. It could be the actions of a father. It could be a sibling. It could be an uncle, an aunt, or a step. Listen to me. People you don't expect, when they hurt you, it goes pretty deep on the inside. Because all of us, we have been wounded, we have been hurt. 
But unless we are able to manage wounds, they will be transformed into family, community, and nation grudges. That is why we are saying, as we face 2021, let go of the offense before it destroys you and before it destroys the next generation. Oh, the narrative says that Jacob and Esau, they eventually reconciled. But the venom created by the, the offense was passed on to the descendants of Esau, the Edomites. And so from henceforth, the relationship between the Edomites and the Israelites was acrimonious. It was a case where the Edomites, carrying the pain, the wound, and the hurt from their father Esau, from their great-grandfather Esau, from the great-great-great-grandfather Esau, the wounds pass on to a next generation, and the Edomites carried within their breasts a spirit of unforgiveness and revenge to their cousin, the Israelites. You see, my friend, when we fail to let go of the offense, we can, in fact, contaminate your children and your children's children as the pain, the wound, and the toxic poison is passed on to a next generation. We must confront 2021 and say, enough is enough. It is time to release my offense. Least I contaminate my children, my children's children, and the next generation. When we come back, we will observe how the Edomites showed their unforgiveness and revenge to their cousin, the Israelites. Welcome back. We are talking today about letting go of the offense before it destroys you and the next generation. The classical case is the Edomites, the descendants of Esau, their father, their great grandfather. Oh, yes, he was wounded by his brother Jacob. And while they were reconciled, the effect, pain, and contamination of the wound lived on for generations to come. The book of Obadiah then speaks to the crime of unforgiveness by the Edomites against their cousin the Israelites. How did the Edomites show unforgiveness and revenge to Israel? If you're familiar with the biblical narrative, you would know that the children of Israel, they were in Egyptian bondage and slavery for 400 plus years. And in the fullness of time, God raised up Moses, the deliverer, and God said to Moses, take my people out to the promised land. But they had to pass through 
the property of the Edomites to get to where they were going. How did the Edomites show unforgiveness? The Edomites came out with anger and rage and they refused to allow Israel to pass through their property. In Numbers chapter 20 from verse 14 it says, from verse 18 it says, And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me. Least I come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway. And if I and my cattle drink of your water, cousin, we will pay you. I will only without doing anything else go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border. Wherefore Israel turned away from him. Years later, while you think that the grudge and the pain died when Jacob and Esau met. No, we can never tell. Sometimes our children and our grandchildren, they will overhear us talking about the offense committed by another family member. They may hear us over talking or talking about offense created by an individual in our lives. They may pick up within their spirit and they may discern that things are not all well. And while we think that they are not observing, oh yes, the spirit of unforgiveness and bitterness was translated to another generation. And when the children of Israel tried to pass through the land of Edom, oh yes, they came out with a mighty strong hand, insisting that their cousin do not pass through their land. Oh, I can see Moses trying to negotiate with the king of Edom. He says, oh, cousin, we will pass by the highway. Oh, cousin, if our cattle drink of your water, we will pay you. But the king of Edom says, you shall not go through. And they came out with much people. Why? It's an old grudge. An old spirit of unforgiveness. The Bible declares, Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus saith thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the travail that thou hast befallen us. How our fathers went down into Egypt. And we have dwelt in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians vex us and our fathers. And when we cried unto the Lord, we heard. He heard our voice and sent an angel. And had brought us out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kaddish, in a city in the uttermost part of your border. Let us! Pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields or through your vineyards. Neither will we drink of your wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left. Cousin, give us an opportunity to pass. And the king of Edom came out with a mighty hand. How did Edom demonstrate unforgiveness? Centuries later, while the children of Israel dwelt in the land of Canaan. Oh, they drifted away from Almighty God. And God raised up the Babylonians to take them away into captivity. King Nebuchadnezzar, they burnt the temple. They burnt the city. They took the vessels and the gold. What was Edom doing? Edom rejoiced when they saw their 
cousin being destroyed by the enemy. As a matter of fact, in Psalm 127 and verse 7, you'd hear the psalmist saying the words of the Edomites. And he says, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it. Even to the foundation thereof. What was Edom doing when the Babylonians attacked? They were saying to the Babylonians, destroy the city down to the foundation. Get rid of them. Make them bare. Make them desolate. Make them barren because the unforgiveness. And this is over 70 years has passed. Because of the anger, the rage, transmitted from generation to generation. How did Edom demonstrate unforgiveness? When the Babylonians moved in, rather than seek to help their cousin, the Bible says in Obadiah 1.13, they entered into the gates of Jerusalem and they started to loot. What an anger. What a rage. They rejoice in the calamity. And whenever unforgiveness permeates our spirits and our mind, we rejoice over the downfall of those we perceive to be our enemies, those who have hurt us. Oh, we long to see them punished. We long to see them judged. We long to see something bad happen to them. So in Obadiah 1.13, God says through his servant, Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not look on their affliction in the day of their calamity. No, have, you should have not laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Yes, in the time of calamity. Rather than lend assistance, they march in, rejoice, and looted because the offense was still in their spirit. Number four, how did Edom demonstrate it? That unforgiveness was still present. There were some Jews who escaped the Babylonian assault. But here's what Edom did. Edom stood in the crossway and cut off the escapees so that the king of Babylon will capture them. And it broke the heart of God. And so in Obadiah 1.14, Obadiah, Obadiah says, Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. The Edomites, they were bent on taking revenge. And where did this all start? It started with their great, 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 great grandfather, Jacob and Esau, who had sibling rivalry and sibling problems. And so the toxic poison went on to a next generation. They cut off the escapees so that the king of Babylon would take them into captivity. Number five, Obadiah 14. Not only did they cut off, but they literally captured the escapee and delivered them back into the hands of the king of Babylon. The Bible says in Obadiah 1.14, Neither shouldest thou stood in the crossway, to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. You ask me to what extent would anger, rage, and unforgiveness get a hold of your spirit? Oh yes, you want to see the person and by extension those associated with the person hurt real badly and so those who escaped we captured them and we carried them back onto the king of babylon that is how edom demonstrated unforgiveness there are so many people today they are carrying wounds 
the old adage, they are drinking medicine for somebody else's sickness. Was there a family member who hurt you? Was it a church member? Was it a religious leader? If you do not grab hold and deal with the offense, we will go into 2021 with a spirit of unforgiveness that will destroy you. Like the children of Esau. It would not only destroy you, but your children, and your children's children, and your children's children's children, they would be carrying an offense, and we will contaminate generations to come. Let go of the offense before it destroys you and the next generation. You observe the extent to which Edom went because of the unforgiveness. They refused to allow Israel to pass through their land. They called on Babylon to make Jerusalem desolate and bare. Raise it, declare. They marched into the city and looted when the city was burning. They cut off all the escapees from getting away from the king of Babylon. They captured some of them and delivered them back to the enemy. Oh, how this grieved the heart of God. And so he raised up the prophet Obadiah to say to Edom, Enough is enough. You should have released your pain. Release your anger. Let go of the offense. Because Yahweh, that just God, He is now going to judge the Edomites. Let go. Don't go into 2021 with offense in your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be a release. Those who have been hurt, wounded by a friend, by a lover, by a husband, by a pastor, by a wife. Oh God, let there be release of the offense that we'll be set free to worship you. At least we are destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. Kelly on the beat, boy. Oh